Hey, everybody. So it's Friday, and uh, it's, it's been a good conference. I've seen some really like cool projects happening. So let me just uh, figure out how to work this button. Oop. I think I, I just jumped over something. So um, I'm here to speak about, about OKEX. Uh, we are in 120 different countries. We trade uh, in multiple actual jurisdictions. We don't. Um, we are headquartered in Malta. Um, we have separated the firm into these pockets because of the challenges with each country, each government, and still giving our and still giving a, a good chance for for our customers to trade within their sandbox. We are the number one market for uh, futures trading, and we have over 10 million users. So just five minutes about myself. Uh, I was a, 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 a NASDAQ executive for about seven years. I've been in FinTech. I started NASDAQ Corpus Solutions. Um, I come from the, the kind of regulated side of the business, and I'm helping OKEX understand the, the expansion of their company into multiple parts of the world. As you know, we don't allow a, a US investor to trade on OKEX. You can go through, you can go through OKCoin, and we have had to separate OKCoin from us in order to manage these types of jurisdictions. So what do we do? It's actually trading markets, right? It's C to C, it's spot trading, it's uh, swaps, it's the futures markets. We have other products. We, we probably have the most products out of any other uh, major exchange right now because we offer pool mining, we offer wallets, and so on and so forth. But, and we are the actual yeah, so number one futures trading. By far, we always list number one. It's either us or BitMEX. There is some propaganda out there with bad data. Don't, well, don't, don't actually look at those sources. Look at the majority of the sources. During the Bitcoin run-up, we had a really interesting time. Um, and, and this is something that, that, that's really important, is that the crypto exchanges are now finally starting to act like real exchanges. They don't go down when the market starts to fly. They process $13 billion worth of trades within one week, in one day. That's mission critical to us being adopted by the institutional funds as this entire business grows. And blockchain adoption is still very key to what's going on. I know that it's crypto winter. I know that we're sitting in the chasm. I know people have lost money on altcoins. I know Bitcoin is very hard to follow. But the, but the fact is, is that we are literally in the same place that the, that the web was and the, the internet was back in 1996, and we're coming out of the chasm. Blockchain adoption is going up, wallets are going up, and they're still really complicated. But we just saw products recently that are gonna remove that complication of a contract address, of, of some weird wallet address, you know, the MetaMask approach and start to solve those problems. With, with those problems being solved, mass adoption will come. And even, the, even top executives of major corporations, 83% of them know that it's gonna go mainstream. 53% have an idea to blockchain their business. It's a great piece of technology, and that's what we, we, we really have to focus on. But again, I am from the exchange world, and I'm gonna address what I know best, which is, why don't the regulators understand what's going on? So I kindly just, um, I've had this conversation multiple times, and I say the same thing, the same thing over and over again. This is a, 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 blockchain is a technology. The original one was Bitcoin, but you can't say Bitcoin, you can't focus on one of them and not focus on the tech. Focus on the tech. It can be applied to multiple things, multiple asset classes, just in finance. And then, of course, we all know it, it, it can be applied to real estate, to biotech, to healthcare, to voting systems. We understand that in this room, 
but we're literally 1% of the population. So this is the way I actually define blockchain to the regulators and to people who I talk to who are from, you know, the New York Stock Exchange guys, NASDAQ, and so on and so forth. The fastest, most efficient, secure clearing and settlement system in the world, and it's free. It's open source. It's like Linux. So when you take away all the Bitcoin stuff and you just go out to them and say, hey, this is, th this is just a, a kind of open source code that's really fast and can transact anything globally within minutes or even seconds now with like Stellar and some of these other faster chains. You know, actually OKB is uh, a chain that we've actually formulated and it's faster than Ethereum, it's faster than most, right? So this is the way that I explain it. And they start getting it. They're like, oh, so this is just a technology database that manages things across multiple asset classes. I'm like, yeah, that's all it is. So if you talk to anybody who's outside of the space, just, just be like, look, man, it's, a, it's technology. It's not just about Bitcoin. And then when you look at the old exchanges, the way that they were formulated, they were decentralized clubs. So when I talked, so I, I was talking to someone who's on the floor of, of the actual New York Stock Exchange still, which is like an archaic dinosaur. And I said to him, I was like, you remember the old NYC like Board of Governors? You remember the group that used to run it? He's like, yeah, you remember when it, it used to be a membership? That's what a blockchain really is. It's a consensus, it's a membership. Why, why are you guys caught in this like ridiculous world of Bitcoin, you know, fraud and thievery. I mean, it's nothing to do with that. And they utilize stock certs, and they self-regulated. So their stock certs were, were their tokens, and they self-regulated. But they lack things on the global side that the blockchain can fix. Blockchain can fix clearing and settlement across multiple borders instantaneously. Why are we even having a different conversation? Why is there so much FUD? Because they don't, either they don't want it to go that fast, or, or they're worried that there's going to be this, 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 this kind of alternative market. But we're seeing alternatives to, that are coming up already. Swift and Ripple. You know, Swift, there's a new version of Swift that's a separate group. There, you know, so it's happening, guys. This centralized, everything flows through one country thing is actually going to become questionable. It's better, it's better for everybody. And then retail investors, you try to buy Facebook in Vietnam. It's a 25% sales commission. Nobody can buy it. And you gotta buy a full share. You can't fractionalize it. We can get rid of all that. More people, more masses, get, they, they're getting in to the stock market, to the futures market, the utilities market, whatever market that they choose to be in, they have opportunity, not just a bunch of ETFs. I'm like anti-ETF, because it's, it's, it's just a, a, another scheme to get another two points off, off of everybody's money. So we came up with this, uh, the next phase for us crypto exchanges, and we think it's about, a, it's, it's about building a global, an SRO is a hard word, right? It's FINRA, it's scary, SRO, right? But it's kind of like an SRO. It's, it's like a Paris Accord version of it. And what's funny is that I, I did the same uh, pitch in, in, in Malta about three weeks ago, and I had seven exchanges come, come up to me, smaller ones, and one tech company that had about 1,000 exchanges that they ran tech on. And they're like, we'll join. And then I recently found a group that was already doing this, on a global basis, not local. There's all these local ones. US jurisdiction, what's a security, what's not a security. That's all good. But on a global level, if we have the fastest blockchain, the fastest blockchain, the fastest clearing and settlement system in the world, the rules have to seem similar or it will be very effed up, okay? Because one of the things that I did in my past life was I put together a lot of roll-ups in the corporate solutions business, which doesn't make any sense to, to most people. It's the, it's the business of companies that service big public companies. 
If you're the CFO for Microsoft, you have shareholders all over the world. You are listed in multiple places. You have different rules for everything. Clearing, settlement, broker dealers, institutions, market makers. It is, a, it is very complicated and costs you a lot of money to be public. Blockchain can solve that problem. We don't want to reenact the same business model of, of the current Wall Street systems. We need to get away from that and use the efficiency of blockchain. And the only way to, and the only way to do that is to ensure that the rules are at least similar jurisdiction to jurisdiction. What is a security? Every country should say a security is X, Y, Z. And then when you want to transfer them across multiple you know, spots, places, you know, wallets, accounts, broker dealers, whatever, it'll, it'll happen quite nicely. You, you won't have all of these stupid barriers. So that's our pitch. And, and our goal is, is getting, I mean, this isn't a short-term goal, and this is why I'm here. I'm the OKX guy who is going to try to build out the international expansion by trying to get folks to really work together, set some rules, set some goals. And we can all compete still, but as an industry, Wall Street has clubs. The Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and all of, all of those guys are, 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 are members in, in, in something called SIFMA because they're trying to push the, the entire business forward. So the USDT futures is one of our newest, it's a great new product. It's uh, 0.1, point, 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 actually 0, 0.1 to 100, 100 times of leverage. And for people who are scared to do that much leverage, I, I would never do the 100 times leverage myself because it's like white knuckle trading. But we have these products, and we are, are, actually, we are actually doing it 24-7, and it's daily settlement. That's fantastic. It's a cool product. We are going to be launching that product in the next two weeks or so. Uh, again, US investors go through OKCoin. OK you can't go through us. They may not have the futures up and ready. But if you're a, in the US, it's blocked, which I, quite, which I also find quite silly in some ways, right? Let the, get the US regulators to write some rules. Let's just write the rules. No big deal. I love, you know, I've been in the for regulated business for 20 plus years. We can live in that. It's okay. But we need the rules. And if we don't have them, we're kind of like, oh, I got to block this country and I have to do this and I have to do that. And I have to, do. it's like, it's silly. And then the other thing that we're doing, which I think is, is very positive, is that we created the OK chain. And we have already 14 projects. Two projects I'm going to point out. One's called True Chain, 100 plus online stores. The other one is uh, Slow Mist, which is a cybersecurity bulletproof type of system building on OK Chain. It's a good blockchain protocol. And then the third, which people know, is BitTorrent. Everybody heard of BitTorrent. Well, they're building their next generation BitTorrent on the OK Chain blockchain. So we're trying to do a lot here as a global exchange, as, as a leader in the futures market. We want to work with other exchanges. We want to work with the governments. We want to make sure that people are, are actually, no one's trying to trick investors. We want to do the right thing. So my message to everyone, whenever you speak to someone, because we're all the, the, the uh, folks that are inside the room, that we have the best clearing and settlement system in the world. It's free. The regulations have to catch up. And um, we welcome everyone in. And thank you.